Show me the money. All right, show me the money. NFL picks are here for week number five. Join me today. Back on the picks after a one-year hiatus. The one of the best guys over at Sports Grid, Kevin Walsh Jr. is here. Kevin, how are you? I'm good, Mike. Uh, excited to be talking to you again. NFL season. Uh, we're like a month in, man. It, it's already going a little too fast for my liking. I hear that, man. Now the, we're in the first full year now of legalized sports betting in New York, in New York State and a lot of the, these markets here. So how has the betting been going for you so far this year? Yeah, I, I was able to get into a, a nice groove this past uh, weekend, uh, which felt good. Uh, you know, it, it's, uh, it's a tricky sport right now. I, I do love my player props, but we are transitioning into a period, uh, I think, of the NFL calendar where I'll start to feel a little more comfortable uh, with some of these sides and, and spreads. Uh, and, it, you know, the, the scoring was really down to open up the season last week. We saw some better spots. So if that can open it up, it'll make these totals fear, uh, feel a little more in play. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, I'm looking at it right now. I'm just seeing some of these numbers this year. I mean, I've had a rough feel that rough go this year trying to get a feel for what's going on with the situation. But mm -hmm. I think that, like, I as this year goes on, I feel I'll get more comfortable. And I do think that one thing is very comfortable is your Eagles because, I mean, they're the only undefeated team left in the league. They were down mm -hmm. early in Jacksonville, and they pick up a big comeback win here. What was the big takeaway from that game? So I actually think it was the – kind of victory that you need to see from any team that you're going to take at legitimate as a Super Bowl contender, which is a come from behind win in what looked like a, a pretty reasonable danger spot. You know, this is a Jacksonville team that is clearly improved with Trevor Lawrence now in his sophomore season and a year to year upgrade at the head coach position that cannot be overstated going from Urban Meyer to a Super Bowl winner with the Eagles, of course, in Doug Peterson. And they get a pick six. They jump out to a 14 nothing lead. And the Jags didn't even hold that lead into halftime. The Eagles and this offense absolutely has an ability to turn it on. I, I think they boast one of the best defenses in the entire National Football League as well. I, I thought it, you could argue it was their most impressive win of the season, honestly, to me. Yeah, that's for sure here. And obviously, it feels a little weird to say, you know, there's one undefeated team left in week five, but it is the Eagles. And their schedule you look at is, you know, it's pretty solid. They could have a reasonable chance to get the number one seed in the NFC here if they take care of their business here. So what do you think is the ceiling mm -hmm. of this Eagles team this year? Yeah, I, I, I mean, the absolute ceiling is, is to win a Super Bowl. If you're the number one seed in your conference, I, I don't know how that couldn't be your ceiling. And the Eagles right now are favorites to finish with that number one spot, they have the highest win total of any team, not just in the NFC, in the entire league. Them, the Bills are both 12 and a half, but the Eagles have stronger juice on their over. So uh, I, now, uh, obviously it's tough. You, you have to prove it, right? There's a lot of guys in, uh, with proven track records. Your Pat Mahomes, your Tom Brady's will, will have a lot to say about it. But I don't know how anyone could say the Eagles ceiling isn't Super Bowl champions. Yeah, it's definitely an interesting point here. And they have a very interesting match here in week five because obviously a lot of people in Philly are going to look ahead to that Dallas game in week six or something nice. That's with Dak mm -hmm. probably on the way back here. But they go on the road against the Cardinals here where two and two, they got their act together, their best ever of the season against Carolina last week. And I feel like the Eagles are not careful here. They kind of look ahead to Dallas in this game and they could get tripped up in. Yeah, obviously the Dallas game is big, but when you're 4 and 0, you're. I would think that we, you know, we'll find out, but you know, I go, Hey man, we'd be five and all right. Yeah. Not that the Eagles are sad. They're saying we're going to go unbeaten, but I think it can help keep you focused. Also, they got a scare last week from Jacksonville, as we said, down for nothing. So consecutive to start, uh, I don't necessarily boost for the birds is the Arizona Cardinals game is in Arizona. I know that might sound a little silly to some people. But we, we saw it all of last season. And it's carried over here. Owen two at home, Arizona, not covering. Oh, 
to open up this season on the road, covering in both games, and while actually winning outright as an underdog in both games. Yeah, look at the number of that game, too. They're five-and-a-half point favorites. I think it's an interesting spot number for you looking at in that game as well. Yeah, it's, it's kind of that dead zone. If you really like the Arizona Cardinals, you wait. Maybe you get a six, right? Could it go to six and a four? But you, you have patience there. And, you know, because if it, if it goes from five-and-a-half to four-and-a-half, you still like them at four-and-a-half. So you want to see how the line moves throughout the Absolutely. Let's go ahead and get to the picks is the reason why you're here. Last week, I mean, Charlie Board is, was here. He actually went 3-0 in the week. He had the Ravens getting the 3.5 against the Bills at home. They mm-hmm. cover the number. He had the Jets plus 3. They won outright in Pittsburgh. And the Titans plus 3.5. They won outright with the Indianapolis the Colts here. So, nice. 3-0 with three dogs is a very impressive feat. Yeah. I mean, back in the dog uh, is uh, always a, a nice approach. Uh, I think sometimes if you can play overreactions on, on a week-to-week basis and uh, three knows some, some good stuff, tough act to follow. Absolutely. Here, I went two and one on the week last week. I went heads up with him on the Bill Raven game. I had the Bills. I lost that one. We had a family play on the mm. Jets, which I never expected to happen, but I got that one correctly here. And I had the Raiders laying the two at home against the Broncos in the must-win spot here. They did come through. I feel first winning week of the season, I felt good about those Raider Jet picks. Yeah, I mean, I, I, as you should, they, they obviously both came in uh, being willing to back that desperate Vegas squad there, I, I think was uh, a nice move. Some people, oh man, how concerning is this for Denver? I, I don't think too much. Again, it, it's hard to push a, a team with the Vegas talent level to own four in their own building. The Broncos got their best look and who knows, that game might have looked a little different if not for a Melvin Gordon fumble that was returned for a touchdown. All right, absolutely here. So now we are set up for the picks. So we're going to do three and three as always. You're up first. We're going with your first pick of the week. Yeah, so it's a really interesting slate here. I wish that I was able to do this uh, when the Dolphins were laying just the three, but uh, I like Miami Dolphins here with Teddy Bridgewater laying three and a half against the New York Jets. And Teddy Bridgewater uh, has a phenomenal against the spread mark in his career. The Jets have not covered a home game yet this season. And you've got the Miami Dolphins with the rest advantage coming off of Thursday Night Football. Yeah, that's an interesting spot here at the Dolphins, too, because obviously they're coming off the extra rest. But the back of quarterback thing is interesting. The Jets didn't play well down the stretch. You haven't seen them play a complete game yet here, but for me, that's a stay away. I could see the Dolphins. I see that going either way. Yeah, it's going to be, uh, look, maybe Zach Wilson turns his team around, but uh, I'll, I'll let him prove it to me two weeks in a row, Mike. All right, we're going with pick number two. All right, so for pick number two, uh, I'm going to go with a home dog, and the Washington Commanders getting two and a half points here. Uh, maybe, you know, if you wait on this, could you get to three later in the week? We'll see. But I think the Commanders are being a little undersold here in the market. I, I don't think Tennessee is completely turned their season around. Obviously, two nice back-to-back victories, but I think home field advantage could be a difference maker for Washington. I like them at home catching the points. Yeah, it's a big spot with the Titans, too. I feel like now everybody's going to be jumping back on them because, oh, you know, they came out, they won two in a row, they beat the Colts up pretty badly here, but I still don't trust that team. Uh, it's going to be uh, an interesting spot, though, for Tennessee, obviously uh, trying to contend for an AFC South crown of division that they were able to win uh, last year as well, of course, and, and the number one seed in the AFC. All right, absolutely. Where are you going with your last pick of the week? Yeah, I'm going to go with the Rams, uh, laying four and a half against Dallas. This number was four a little bit earlier on, but I think you're getting some value here based on the Rams' ugly performance on Monday Night Football against the 49ers. I think Cooper Rush is the quarterback here, and while it's been a phenomenal start to his NFL career, uh, I think that stops with the Rams in a nice little get-right spot at home. Yeah, it's an interesting game for sure. I don't really have a feel of it, so I sort of stay away from that game, especially with the Dallas defense being as good as it is. Four and a half is an interesting number, in that, not my opinion, for that game. Yeah, I, again, the, the fours were out there. That would have been a nice number to get. We'll see what happens, though, when the Cowboys make their official announcement at the quarterback position. I'll say this. If Jack comes in and that line drops down to a three, uh, two and a half, I'll like the Rams even more than I do right now. Absolutely. Let's go to across from me now. Pick number one. I'm going to go with the Ravens here, laying three at home on Sunday night against the Bengals. I think this is sort of like the desperation spot was for the Raiders. I think this is the, for the Ravens coming up because they had a couple of bad losses to Buffalo and Miami over the past few weeks. They usually are a very good home team. The fact they haven't won at home yet is something they're going to try to rectify here. 
The Bengal line mm-hmm. still is not very good. The Ravens had a lead pass rush here. I think they're going to have a lot of trouble stopping the, stopping the Baltimore run game. I think the better weather will be a factor here for the Ravens as well. Give me Baltimore laying the three on Sunday night for the first pick of the week. I don't mind it. I, I think Baltimore is one of those teams right now some people could develop trust issues with, though. The two games that they maybe looked the best in resulted in major, major blown lead. Cincinnati uh, off of that mini buy there, but I do think Baltimore is a more talented roster. Absolutely. That's pick number one. Pick number two, I'm going to go with the Vikings, and this is a big six and a half against the uh, Chicago Bears at home, but this is more of an anti bear pick. I mean, they. Don't do much offensively at all. They don't trust Justin Fields to throw the football here. I think Minnesota coming back from that thrilling win in London is going to have an extra win to them this week. I don't think Chicago is going to really keep up with that, especially if Dave Montgomery is not back for this game. They don't have the firepower to keep up with slowing down Justin Jefferson, that Minnesota running game. I think the Vikings do win this pretty big. Yeah, a nice number getting the six and a half instead of the sevens uh, that are out there. Interesting to see how not only Minnesota does this week, but also the Saints coming off of a London game. Yeah, without the buy, which is very unusual. A lot of these teams take the buy right after they go. Yeah, but we, we didn't see either team do that, which is pretty interesting. I know the Giants are going there. They're also not going to be taking a buy. I'm not sure if Green Bay is or not. They are not because they're playing the Jets at home in Week 6. Oh, there you go. That is a buy. Yeah, well, we'll see about that. And last pick of the week here. I every, Everybody loves Detroit. Everybody loves their offense. Everybody's all over the Lions. I'm going the other way here. I'm going to England laying the three at home. I think that they did in Green Bay was very impressive. They played a great defensive game against Ryder and company. And I'll take Bill Belichick out coaching Dan Campbell for like every day and twice on Sunday here. I think laying three is a bargain. I know they might have Bailey Zappi at quarterback, but Detroit defense is a sieve. I think the Lakers are going to run the football down at the clock this game. I think this is one where everybody's they're begging you to take the Lions. I'm not going to take the Bay. I'm going to take the Patriots and lay the three points here. It's a, it's a tough game for me to call because I didn't think this was going to be New England minus three. I thought there was a slight chance we saw the Lions actually as like a one-point road favorite here. The best offense in the NFL scoring-wise is catching three points to Bailey Zappi. Interesting spot. Yeah, it's a number for me. It's like one of those lines that you say, huh, when you look at it the first time. For me, I think they want people to take Detroit. I'm not going to fall for the trap. All right. Well, uh, I will certainly find out. Big Bailey Zappi gets the start. Yeah, we'll see if he does. On the week here, Kevin is going with the Dolphins, laying three and a half in MetLife against the Jets. The Commanders, a two and a half point home underdog against the Titans. The Rams laying four and a half at home against the Cowboys. I am laying the, the Ravens, laying three points on Sunday football against the Bengals. The Vikings laying six and a half at home against the Chicago Bears. And the Patriots laying three at home against the Detroit Lions. Those are your picks for week number five on the podcast. Coming up next week on the podcast, I'm going to have my buddy Kev, go from one count to another. Kevin Lillis is coming on. We're going to talk about the Jets next week. Jets off and recap here. And I think that's going to be a very fascinating game to watch this week. Oh, uh, it, definitely a, a big game. And also, by the way, there are there are threes out there. So, I mean, do whatever you want. Like, you know, you, you can get Miami minus three. Uh, so, uh, as, as always, want to make sure you're uh, accessing the best of the lines. Uh, so the Dolphins are a, a three-point favorite. We'll, maybe it'll close at three and a half, but again, those field goal uh, prices are out there. Yeah, I mean, I always shop around for the best price before I lock my bets in for the week. I think it's got to be an optimal strategy here. Yeah, you got to always make sure you're getting uh, the best of the number. Like you said, that uh, you know the Minnesota line, right? A lot of se- mostly mostly sevens. If you have a six and a half, that's a big advantage. Is a big advantage here, and I'm also wanting to get your opinions on here because I'm, I'm actually doing something new on the podcast. Too. I'm doing some NBA over unders on the podcast a couple of weeks while my friends here. So, mm-hmm. uh, so you're a big NBA guy. You have any that mm-hmm. you like offhand right now? Yeah, so it, it's going to be really, um, it's going to be a really interesting season overall with the title favorite Celtics losing their coach right before the season gets underway. I just feel like that almost sets the tone for what should be a fascinating year. But one number I have been interested in, Mike, is actually the hometown boy, New York Knicks, and they're 39 and a half. I think that's an improved roster. Uh, I think a one-year dip after a really fantastic first season for, was it his first season, Thibodeau? I think it was his first season. I know he won Coach of the Year. Uh, I think we could see a little bounce back for the Knicks, and, and they can play 500 ball, bringing Jalen Brunson into town, locking in R.J. Barrett, and uh, maybe a bounce back year for Julius Randle. Yeah, it's a fascinating number with the Knicks because, like again, like you said, like 
It's, they did, like, t- they got the big piece in Brunson. They were hoping to get Mitchell as he didn't work out here. But 39.5 and, and an improved East is a very, I feel like it's almost, like, right on the on the line. But if I I would sign for you, just your point here, if see them go over. Because this town needs some good basketball that's not, like, revolved around the drama with Durant and Kyrie. Yeah, well, I mean, that is the funny thing, though, is that people say the town needs good basketball. And then one of the most talented teams in the entire league is in the town. But uh, people just don't like to associate themselves with that Brooklyn Nets team, and boy, that's going to be a <laughs> it's going to be an interesting loss, uh, Brooklyn. I'm wondering if KD presses the eject button mid season. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, he swears up and down he committed to the team. I don't, I don't buy it. Well, I don't think he. I don't even think he swears up and down. He goes, "Ah, oh, these Nets fans, they they know what I'm about." All right, so that means you're about a trade request. That's what you did. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. Like someone said, can you commit to this team? And he was like, well, they know what I'm about. Oh, so the answer is no then, Katie, which is fine. But I don't know why he's like, they know what I'm about. That's actually the incorrect message then. Yeah, well, KD you know, is talking to a different audience than the one we're all learning with here. But, Kevin, thanks a lot of time. really appreciate it. Before I let you go, I'll give you a follow on social media. Keep up with your uh, coverage over at SportsGrain. Yeah, appreciate it, Mike. As always, you can find me on Twitter at the Kevin Walsh uh, on Sports Grid all the time. Uh, we've got the morning show, the early line. Uh, in the afternoon, we're doing some radio with Moneyline, but really also on the weekend. Uh, pro football today on Sundays, taking you up until 1 o'clock kick, and college football today on Saturdays up to those noon kickoffs. Yeah, I got to get more to the college football betting. I haven't done that enough. Uh, so it's been a fun, fun season. Uh, it's me, it's Joe Lisi, it's Ben Stevens on Sports Grid. 9 a.m. start time college football today. Uh, if you're looking to get more into the college football season, definitely, definitely check us out. I'll definitely be tuning in soon, Kevin. Thanks for all the time. Really appreciate it. Yeah, you got it, Mike.